But the one standing over there is... Is that... Mm -hmm. She looks exactly like me. Are you... Greater Lord Ruka Devata? Yes, that's me. Are you surprised by my appearance? Ermin's soul and the surrounding lands have been reproduced here as they were years ago. But this is just a realm of consciousness. We are manifestations of the same nature. Hence why we would appear exactly the same. Hmm? We're... of the same nature? Why? Because you are me, and I am you. You are me in the new samsara. The new samsara? As Greater Lord Ruka Devata, I'm the avatar of Ermansoul. And you are the purest branch snapped from Ermansoul. Imagine it this way. Even if a tree dies, its branches will eventually take root and grow, continuing the tree's life in another form. I'm merely the remaining consciousness of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. The real me has presumably died a long time ago. Hmm... Judging from your appearance, I've probably been dead for 500 years. But you're finally here. My new self in the samsara. If this is true, then am I... going to be a great archon like you someday? Though we share the same nature, our fates are bound to be different. All things have their own fate. When a branch grows into a mature tree, it won't be the same as the original tree. That's why fate is the ultimate knowledge, isn't it? That's a great insight. Yes, very good. It's also precisely why you won't become like me. <sighs> but perhaps you may become an even greater Archon than I. I already see a determination in you that I didn't possess in my time. And the future that it leads you to will be yours alone. Along with the blessings from your past experiences. Don't worry. The growth of wisdom is like that of a plant. You only need to wait quietly for the flower to bloom. Come to think of it, the sages never had the faintest inkling of the meaning of wisdom. Thank you. Nothing makes me happier than discovering that the Archon I always admired was, in fact, myself in another fate. It's so nice to speak with you, Greater Lord Ruka Devata. I've always wanted to meet you. The feeling is mutual. From the moment I snapped the branch off Ermin's soul and created you, I've also looked forward to talking with you. Could you tell me why you wanted to create me? And what exactly happened when you died? Ah, I see. You're here seeking answers, right? Everything that day, even the sky itself, changed into a color like this. At that time, the Seven were all summoned to the nation of Conria. Except for me. I had a more important task to attend to. I had to protect Erminsoul. The disaster occurred together with the pollution of forbidden knowledge. At that very moment, with my consciousness connected to Erminsoul, I sensed something was wrong. The pain started to torment my mind. By the time I reached Erminsoul, it was already displaying signs of corruption. Had I not repelled the pollution of forbidden knowledge with King Deshret thousands of years ago, I might have felt even more hopeless and lost. So what exactly is forbidden knowledge? It's a kind of knowledge that doesn't belong to this world, and a form of truth that can't be understood. It came from the very bottom of the abyss. Even I could never understand it. The world is constantly rejecting it, leading to all kinds of bad phenomena. If we allow forbidden knowledge to pollute Ermansoul, I'm afraid the entirety of Tavat could fall apart. So, there's knowledge that even the God of Wisdom can't understand? At that time, I knew I couldn't repel the forbidden knowledge with my strength alone. 
which is why I created a device that compiled human wisdom and named it the Akasha. It's truly the world's most amazing invention. <laughs> Thank you. For a long time, I thought dreams were the fruit of human wisdom. Though it was selfish to do so, I borrowed people's dreams using the Akasha. Then I compiled their wisdom and all of my own power. Well, did it work? Thanks to the wisdom of the people of Sumeru, almost all the forbidden knowledge was cleared from Ermansul. But... Things didn't go as smoothly as I thought. I had a terrible headache, which gave me an uneasy feeling. And then... I remembered that my consciousness was also connected with Ermin's soul. It brought me knowledge and wisdom, but vile corruption as well. From the very beginning, my existence had been polluted by the forbidden knowledge. Oh no! How could that happen? I've experienced that pain in your consciousness. It must have been a horrible experience. Yes, but my feelings weren't important. The important thing was that... Even if I died, my existence and everything related to me would continue to exist in Ermansoul as memories and knowledge. Meaning that the forbidden knowledge couldn't ever be permanently eradicated. And there's no way for me to eliminate myself. It would be a sort of paradox. So... I took the purest branch of Ermansoul as my incarnation in the next samsara and left a trail of clues, all in hopes that you would come here and remove me and my pollution from Ermansoul forever. Wait, no, I can't. <laughs> so you realize what that implies? You are very smart indeed. Ermansoul has all the knowledge and memories of this world. And as you've realized just now, removing me from Ermin's soul means I essentially will never have existed in this world. But this is the only way to save Ermin's soul. People love you so much and, and they've missed you so much over the past 500 years. I... I am exactly the same. So how... how can we just... Forget you like this. Is there really no other way? There must be something else I can do. You're the god of wisdom, Boor. You should know that there is no other way. But this... This is so cruel. I don't want to forget you. No need to feel so sad, Boor. As someone who delights in wisdom, you should feel joy at finally finding the answer. These are the words in their entirety. The answer you've been seeking all along. Let the world completely forget me. We all nestle under the great tree of wisdom, peering out to perceive the world. From the earth and from the rain, we perceive its wonders, until we become a white bird to perch atop a branch and finally snap off the most important leaf. Once upon a time, I alone dreamed in this world. In my dreams, everybody would also dream after they fell asleep. Wild and wonderful thoughts would emerge from their minds. Some tumbled to the ground and others floated to the sky. Connecting all things in the world into one dazzling net. Among a plethora of worlds were numerous smaller worlds. All of fate, finding within the tapestry their brilliant glow. I gradually understood that these indescribable and constantly changing things are the most profound things in the world. Only they can completely repel the madness. Only dreams can awaken consciousness from the deepest darkness.
I'm the one who posed this question, yet also the one who sought a solution. Saving the world with the dreams of the people used to be my answer. And now, you've also found your own answer, and I shall return all the dreams to the people. Goodbye, people of Sumeru. May you be blessed tonight with the sweetest of dreams. <laughs>